Now we're ready to look at the problems for lecture 12. Uh, but before doing so, I want to tell you one last thing that will probably be uh, helpful to you in working on these problems. If we uh, look back up here at this 4x4 four four, uh, Carnot map, uh, that we encountered in problem 5.4 uh, we really didn't need this information but it might have occurred to you uh, or the following question might have occurred to you how do you count or number the cells in the case of a 4x4 R recall that uh, just as a brief review when we have a 2x4 kernel map, let's say x and yz, and we number it in the standard way, recall that the correct way to go through the numbering of the cells is, this is cell 0, because it's 0, 0, 0. And then this is 1 because it's 0, 0, 1. We jump over here for 2 because it's 0, 1, 0. And then finally this is 3, 0, 1, 1. That's all for the top row. And then come down here, 1, 0, 0 is 4, 5, skip over, 6, and 7. So that's the way that we go through the numbering of the cells in a 2 by 4 kernel map. But what about in a 4x4 four four Carnot map. This is going to appear in the problems for this lecture. So let's go ahead and talk about it now. Suppose we have a function of w, x, y, and z in that order. So this is a function f of x, y, z, and here we have a function f of w, x, y, and z. So we put, since w and x are the first two variables, we put those on the vertical axis. Since y and z are the last two variables, we put those on the horizontal axis. And we number 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. The same here, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. And now we ask ourselves how to number, uh, how to go through the cells uh, in order here, okay? This, keeping in mind that W and X are the first two variables, and then Y and Z are the last two variables, then this would be 0, 0, 0, 0. So this is 0, 1, skip over, 2, 3, 4, 5, skip over, 6, 7. Now, so far that looks just like what we had. In fact, it is just like we had with the 2 by 4 case. But now we have 8 more cells to go, and... Uh, remember our last one here was 7 cell 8 we skip you know usually we've been skipping this way now we skip over down here this is 8 and you can see that because it's 1 0 0 0 so this is 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 and 15 so one last time 0 one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. So that's the way that we number the cells on a four by four Carnot map. And now we're ready to look at some, or it, it's really just one problem, but with three parts that you'll be doing for this lecture. So, 
in this problem we'll say consider the function f of w x y z equals the sum of the min terms 0 2 5 6 7 8 10 13 14 and 15 so in each one of these problems uh, we're going to be looking at that function and now we have some questions that we want to answer concerning that function so the problems that we want to ask about this function f of w x y z are as follows number one list all of the prime implicants of this function so again here's the function it's the sum of the min terms 0, 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 13, 14, and 15 and we want to list all of the prime implicants of that function and uh, the choice A is x prime z prime and xz and xy B is x prime z prime and xz and yz prime C is x prime z prime and xz and xy and yz prime and D is x prime y prime z prime and xz and yz prime which is the correct list of all of the prime implicants of f number two now we want a list of all the essential prime implicants of that function and the choices here are a x prime y prime z prime and xz and yz prime b x prime z prime and xz c x z and y z prime and finally d x prime z prime and y z prime and finally in question in the third question we want a list of all of the minimal sums of this function now in choice a there's only one minimal sum and it is x prime z prime or x z or x y in b there's only one minimal sum and it is x prime z prime or x z or y z prime in c there are two minimal sums for this problem and one of them is x prime z prime or x z or w x and that another one is x prime z prime or x z or w prime y prime and d there's also two minimal sums and those are x prime z prime or x z or x y and x prime z prime or x z or y z prime so once again now the way you're supposed to interpret these last two problems the last problem is that choice a corresponds to just this minimal sum choice b corresponds to just this minimal sum and in c and d uh, in each of those cases, um, the proposition is that there are two minimal sums, and they are, the, of course, the two listed. So that concludes Lecture 12, and uh, good luck.